today on Good Morning Maine, exclusive video of the arrest of a Holden man accused of striking a pedestrian and fleeing the scene. Plus, we'll hear about a new law that will protect victims of domestic violence in Maine. And the town of Surrey says no to cannabis businesses that want to open in town. Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith. And I'm Craig Colson. Thank you for joining us this morning. We'll have all the day's news coming up. But first, a check of the forecast. And hey, we have some good news for you. It's looking like a good one today, finally. Yes. Uh, lots of sunshine today, lower humidity levels, uh, not as much wildfire smoke. Yeah. You know, so get out there and, and enjoy if you can. Seems like the stars have aligned. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Devin Biggs with the forecast. And thank you very much, Craig and Emma. Happy Thursday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Spalding's Bangor Radiator and Rust Check. Don't let rust get the best of your car. Protect it with Spalding's Bangor Radiator and Rust Check. Schedule your service now. All right, let's get into things this morning. A little bit of fog out there in a few spots. At least at this point, not very widespread, so it might be very hit and miss out there. So let's exercise some caution this morning. Little beam lights or fog lights may help you out this morning if you encounter some fog. But otherwise, most of us looking pretty good. Good. Otherwise, as we get things rolling out there this morning, there's a few clouds in a few spots, even a few showers along the coast this morning. These will, we will not have to worry about all that much as we will be under a dry sky today. A partly cloudy sky today, so no rain to get too worried about. As you do zoom things out, this is all moving from the west, going toward the east with a system that's moving away now. So a dry day expected, but we do have chances for showers and storms on the way Friday and also in a Saturday. So moving forward, though, not too bad. Partly cloudy, I do not buy the precipitation here. We're dry today with a partly cloudy sky. We're mostly clear later on tonight with areas of dense fog that will develop. On top of that, we're also watching just a tiny bit of wind, which will be rather calm, if not five miles per hour at best. So the wind will continue to behave itself as we do move forward in time. So for today, partly cloudy with highs in the mid 80s and the wind overall looking nice and calm. For tonight, mostly clear areas of dense fog on the way, lows in the low 60s and the wind overall looking nice and calm. Hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period, a lot of sunshine and a few passing clouds temperatures in the 80s your full five day forecast is coming up Craig and Emma all right thank you Devin well, one person is dead after getting struck by a pickup truck last night in the town of Blaine according to state police it happened around 9 45 last night on route one they say a 45 year old Wayne Field of Blaine struck an unidentified pedestrian it appears he slammed on the brakes and attempted to avoid hitting the person but the person was struck and killed Police believe excessive speed might have been a factor in the crash. The crash remains under investigation and charges may be filed. Now for an update on a hit and run investigation in Brewer. On Saturday, Brewer police were called to Eastern Avenue after a vehicle struck 87 year old Ira Williams before speeding off. Williams was injured seriously and last night the man suspected of hitting him was in custody. Devin Dagnall has the latest. Wednesday afternoon, Brewer PD arrested the man who they believe was responsible for that crash. This exclusive footage obtained by ABC7 News shows officers arresting 51-year-old David McKenzie of Holden after executing a search warrant at his home. Police found a vehicle matching the descriptions previously released with heavy damage to its front passenger side. McKenzie faces two felony charges, one for leaving the scene of a personal injury accident and another for aggravated assault. We spoke with William's grandson earlier Wednesday who stressed the urgency and importance of finding the man who injured his grandfather. It's an urgency because if this happened to my grandfather while he was safe on the sidewalk, could this happen to someone else in the community? The investigation is still ongoing and we'll keep you updated as we learn more. Back to you. Well, in other news this morning, two people have been arrested on drug charges after Bangor police responded to reports of a family fight. Officers responded to Essex Street around 11 o'clock Monday morning. They were told the suspect had left in a vehicle and they began looking. Officers spotted the vehicle in downtown Bangor and stopped it in Brewer. Police identified the driver as 29-year-old Sarah Crawford of Brewer. She was charged with unlawful possession of drugs. 41-year-old Jesus Manuel Burgos of the Bronx, New York, was a passenger in the vehicle. He gave police several false names. Bangor Police Sergeant Jason McCambly says Burgos had a substantial amount of illegal drugs, cash, and other items in his possession. He's now charged with aggravated drug trafficking and criminal mischief for damage at the scene of the family fight call on Essex Street. 
The Somerset County Grand Jury has indicted two people involved in a car crash that killed one child and injured several others. Police say 30-year-old Robert Simons was heading west on Route 148 in Madison in October when the vehicle he was driving left the roadway and hit a tree. Three children and 28-year-old Ashley Corson were also in Simons' vehicle. Simons, Corson, and one child suffered non-life-threatening injuries in the crash. One child suffered severe life-threatening head injuries. The third child was pronounced dead at the scene. Simons and Corson were both indicted on charges of manslaughter, aggravated assault, criminal OUI, and endangering the welfare of a child. Governor Janet Mills signed a bill into law Wednesday to expand abortion access in the state of Maine. The landmark bill will allow abortions in the later stages of pregnancy, if deemed necessary by a licensed physician. Governor Mills says she originally introduced the bill after learning of the story of Dana Pierce, a Maine woman who traveled to Colorado to get an abortion. Pierce, members of the Maine Council of Churches, representatives from the Maine Medical Association, and others were all present during that signing yesterday. We are affirming that Maine people, guided by their medical professionals, their families, their personal and spiritual beliefs, that they will make decisions about their reproductive health care. They will do so, and not politicians. Well, in a statement, Maine GOP Chairman Joel Stetkis said in part, quote, This is a sad day for Maine. We desperately need to end the unchecked absolute power of one-party democratic rule in Augusta. End part. End the quote. The previous state law banned abortions after a fetus becomes viable outside of the womb roughly 24 weeks, but allowed exceptions if the patient's life was at risk. Under the new law, abortions will be allowed at any time if it's deemed necessary by a doctor. A new law in Maine aims to better protect victims of domestic violence after their abusers are released from jail. Owen Kingsley is speaking with a South Portland woman about her experience and the protections she wishes she'd had. Jennifer Greensmith is a survivor of domestic violence. She says her abuser was released from prison early and her only notice was a late night phone call. She believes that this new law will save lives. I'm going to have you go sit on one of the green chairs and we'll get you right in. Jennifer Greensmith now has a happy and healthy family in South Portland and runs her own business. But in 2017, she says she was in a violent relationship. And it was so quick, um, you know, until it turned into actually, you know, strangling me on numerous occasions. Um, one that I was actually told um, I was probably seconds from dying. Greensmith says her abuser was sentenced to nine months, but just five months into his sentence, she got a call around midnight saying he was being released early. It was really unfortunate to hear at midnight when I had no idea where he was. Before he was sentenced, Greensmith said she had a protection order against him and her abuser had to be electronically monitored by police. The Portland police were on high alert around my house at all times. But she says he was not monitored when released. You just think that you know, that person's gonna be able to get you at any point. Maine's new law is designed to help people like Greensmith, notifying victims ahead of time when their abuser is released early. Prior to this uh, LD being passed, the jails would notify, they had, they could notify even after the person had been released and they could do it through the mail. The law also requires more factors be considered when releasing a convicted criminal who may pose a risk to the community. You need to look at that criminal history. You should be in touch with the district attorney's office. Um, and, and most importantly, you should be in communication with the victim of that crime. Owen Kingsley reporting. In other news, Maine farmers came together in Albion on Wednesday to speak out against a proposed transmission corridor. Our David Ledford brings us that story. It really feels harsh. It's an attack. Dairy farmers and agricultural producers throughout Albion, Palermo, and China, Maine gathered to voice their concerns about Ellis Power Grid's proposed transmission corridor. The Missouri company's plan would involve more than 100 miles of high voltage transmission line intended to aid Maine in the development of renewable energy as part of the Aroostook Renewable Gateway project. However, the proposed pathways for the lines would go through farmland in several communities, and farmers say they are concerned that the corridor would affect their livelihoods. Both of those options literally run right straight through two of our fields. 
there's already a, a few nails in the coffin of the dairy industry and, and mostly the farming uh, in this area. And I think this is, uh, this is just another nail in that coffin. Farmers say they first learned about the corridor after receiving letters from LS Power Grid earlier this summer. These people have not slept. They've been under duress. We've all come together to, to really uh, try to figure out what to do. Albion is home to 10 active dairy farms, with another four in Palermo and China. Farmers say that dairy farms and milk processing contribute $904 million in direct benefit and $1 billion in indirect benefit to Maine's economy annually. Regardless of how much power we're going to consume, we all have to eat, so we can't affect our agriculture. To learn more about the proposed project, visit lspgridmaine.com. In Albion, David Ledford, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. All right, the time now is 6.10. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, a Bar Harbor food pantry is trying to fill an entire, an entire theater with food donations to help feed hungry families. We'll tell you how you can help. But first, another check of that weather forecast. A nice day ahead today. It will be partly cloudy with highs up near 84 degrees, less humid too. Mostly clear overnight with chances of fog. The lows will drop down to the low 60s. Tomorrow, the clouds move back in, a mostly cloudy day with a chance of thunderstorms. The high on Friday, around 79. I got rear-ended at a stoplight, and the insurance company tried to give me this tiny little check. Don't take a tiny check from the insurance company. I called the twos, and Lowry & Associates got me $300,000. Call the twos. We win for you. Looking to buy or sell your home in eastern and central Maine? Look no further than Melissa Bartlett of Better Homes and Gardens Masiello Group. With more than 25 years of experience in the industry, multi-millions in sales, and five-star recommendations, Melissa knows the ins and outs of the market, making your real estate journey seamless. Whether you're a first-time buyer or a seasoned investor, Melissa's expertise will guide you every step of the way. Your journey to a new home starts here with your main move and Melissa Bartlett. Call today and let her experience be your advantage. All the nonsense. Fibber, fibber. Meets no nonsense. I don't buy it. Judge Judy. Weekdays at 5 on ABC7. Are you game? Well, let's go. Come on. To take a spin. I am ready. Show me what you got. To make a guess. Hilarious punchline. You got it. Whoa. To take a trip. To Maui. <laughs> to win it all. Parting ways. <laughs> to take a spin on the Wheel of Fortune. Weekdays at 7 on ABC7. Show me what you got. Surrey residents voted to put a moratorium on cannabis businesses in the town. More than 70 Dating people to attended the town meeting to vote on the matter. Our Doug Banks spoke to a town official to see what happens next. Dating back to 2016, when the state of Maine voted for the legalization of recreational cannabis, its implementation in Surrey has been filled with trial and error. Since legalization, there have been several moratoriums put in place, prohibiting dispensaries from setting up shop in town. Now the town has enacted a new 180-day moratorium in order for town officials to understand residents' thoughts and develop a plan. Select board member Chris Stark says, One cannabis business in Blue Hill has shown interest in establishing a facility in Surrey, but now they'll have to wait a little bit longer. When you bring in a, a business, um, any type of business, um, how it affects the town is, um, is something that, you have to get a lot of feedback from everybody. One Surrey resident who attended the town meeting and voted against the moratorium believes that another moratorium is a circumstance of a fight against cannabis. There's some strong feelings for and against. And that's in transition like everything else. You know, it's, everything's been in transition since cannabis was legalized in 2016. So we're all, we're all learning along the way. According to Stark, once an ordinance is developed during the moratorium, it will be on the November 7th ballot for a final vote by all Surrey residents. In Surrey, Doug Banks, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. 
The Deer Isle Stonington Historical Society is celebrating the long life of a beloved late resident. Centurion Salome Sellers was one of 108 years old when she died back in 1909. She was the oldest woman in Maine at the time of her death. Salome's life. She had a long life. She spanned two centuries, 1800 on, and so that's 1908. House, which her husband hand built for her as a wedding gift, is now home to the Historical Society and Museum. Sellers was an early member of the Daughters of the American Revolution and was also known for teaching Maine women about government and world affairs. A docent from the Daughters of the American Revolution will visit the museum today at 1 p.m. to educate others and share more about Sellers' life. For more information, you can visit the Deer Isle Stonington Historical Society's website at dishistoricalsociety.org. Christmas may be more than five months away, but it's beginning early this year in Bar Harbor. Bar Harbor Food Pantry is getting in the holiday spirit in an effort to stock their shelves during a month-long event. Our Matthew Jaronsic reports they're trying to fill their Criterion Theater with food. There's no presents under the tree or stockings above the fireplace yet, but Bar Harbor Food Pantry is looking to bring a little Christmas cheer, hosting its first ever Christmas in July event. It's a food and fun drive that we've been holding now all month and uh, raising money for the Bar Harbor Food Pantry. The goal? To receive enough bags of food to fill all 760 seats of the Criterion Theater. The food pantry also is looking for cash donations. Any donations collected will be matched by the Witham Family Hotel's charitable foundation up to $20,000. They are on their way to their goal with less than $3,000 to go. Reeve says he's touched by all the support he's received in the Bar Harbor community. It's really, it's hard to put into words uh, the love and support that we feel from our community. The wave of support comes on the heels of the food pantry's past two busiest months doubling the amount of individuals needing food assistance. We've had over 1,350 customer visits in the last two months. Uh, to put that in perspective, that is one third of what we saw all of last year. The food pantry has managed this influx, making sure those who walk out the door know that they have enough to fill their stomachs. We're feeding folks, but beyond that, hopefully we're letting folks know that they're taken care of in this community. Even those using the food pantry felt some Christmas spirit in the air. So I think it's exciting that we're capturing some of that uh, festivity um, and giving spirit even in July and getting people to come and bring and donate food and money and support the food pantry. Christmas in July is not over yet. Anyone interested in donating food can do so either at the food pantry or the back of the YWCA during operating hours. You can also buy seats online visiting Bar Harbor Food Pantry's website. In Bar Harbor, Matthew Jaronsic, ABC7, and Fox 22 News. What a great project. Yeah, yeah, looks like a lot of fresh veggies too. That's awesome. Yeah. Yep. All right, the time now is 6.18 after the break. A tropical storm is touching down in Hawaii. We'll have all the details on this. Plus your full local weather forecast coming up as Good Morning Maine continues. If you or a loved one has been diagnosed with mesothelioma or asbestos-related lung cancer, contact the law offices of Joe Bornstein to learn about your legal rights. Maine has the highest rate of mesothelioma fatalities in the U.S. You may be eligible to receive compensation if you were exposed to asbestos products while working in a shipyard, mill, factory, or construction site. For a free case evaluation, dial 207-CALL-JOE or online at joebornstein.com. The first ever Mazda CX-50, purpose built for the outdoors. With our most advanced driving technology for responsive, consistent performance on road and off that entices you to go further more often. Find your new Mazda today at Varney Mazda, 260 Hogan Road in Bangor and discover what Varney value is all about. These days you can buy a new mattress anywhere. However, getting the right mattress at the right price will keep you up at night. When you're ready for a new mattress, come to Dorsey's. We've delivered more mattresses to this area than any other retailer. With over 48 years of experience, the largest in-stock selection, plus our 30-night sleep guarantee, 
we've got the right mattress for you at a great price. Dorsey Furniture, Route 1A, Holden. Sleep well, my friends. Welcome back, everyone. Tropical Storm Calvin is bringing strong winds and heavy rain as it moves away from the Olo Aloha State. Fox's Eben Brown has more. More than a million people are under a state of emergency in Hawaii. This, as the center of Tropical Storm Calvin, makes its way south of the Big Island. The Tropical Storm warning is in effect with Calvin unleashing dangerous surf, damaging winds, and heavy rain. There will be flooding. There will be probably some mudslides, which we always get on Big Island. This is the first tropical alert issued for Hawaii since July of 2020 with Hurricane Douglas. It prompted alerts as it grazed the state to the north. Communities have been spending the last few days getting ready for potential flooding with sandbags. Our parks guys and our public works guys started clearing out the you know, different viaducts and things like that, so make sure that things aren't backed up. Calvin had peak sustained winds of 45 miles an hour with higher gusts on Wednesday morning as it headed west at about 20 miles an hour. Calvin is forecast to dump four to eight inches of rain along parts of the Big Island of Hawaii through Thursday with isolated spots reaching 10 inches. We're looking at tropical storm force um, strength coming into parts of the Big Island, so that could mean some down power lines or down trees. In Miami, Eben Brown, Fox News. Right. As far as our neck of the woods, a much different situation. We've been dealing with some uh, kind of oppressive heat lately, yeah. rain, I mean, you name it. But Crazy to humidity. But today looks lovely. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Here's Devin Biggs with our forecast. All righty, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Spalding's Bangor Radiator and Rust Check. Don't let rust get the best of your car. Protect it with Spalding's Bangor Radiator and Rust Check. Schedule your service now. All right, let's get into things. Fog isn't a huge deal out there, at least for the time being, so maybe a little bit of a few spots that are seeing some of that. But we're looking fine as we do move forward in time. Just watch out for maybe some patchy areas where your low beam lights or fog lights might be necessary. Otherwise, a few clouds tracking through this morning, even a few showers along the coast that we're noticing as well. That will all get out of here. We're going to be under a party county sky today so finally a nice day to get outside and enjoy the nice weather the system is moving away from us now high pressure located right overhead we're just going to be under a party cloudy sky today with no precipitation to worry about for today only so party cloudy today i do not buy any rain chances this thing is showing we're dry all day long will then become mostly clear later on tonight areas of dense fog developing yet again as we head towards tomorrow morning we may have to watch that closely then some clouds moving in again as we head towards friday evening and a parts of saturday morning too with a few showers and storms possible late Friday as well, continuing in a parts of early Saturday morning. Now, I'll continue as we do move forward. Otherwise, though, your muggy meter showing dew points that are finally falling for a change, though. We're back in the 50s and 60s for today and part of tomorrow. And once we head towards later to tomorrow and Saturday, Sunday, and beyond, we're looking for dew points in the middle 60s again. But Monday and Tuesday falling back down between the 50s and also into the 60s. If you're heading outside today, that UV index will be at an 8. It's considered very high. A burn time at 15 minutes. Had sunglasses the sunscreen shade will be necessary to avoid a bad sunburn. Our average high temperature is 81 degrees. Mid 80s is what we'll do today. We'll then fall back into the upper 70s Friday into Saturday. Mid 80s return again Sunday and lasting through at least Wednesday as we head towards the next week. Otherwise, the water temperatures in the ocean are warming up into the upper 60s to lower 70s. So the ocean feeling pretty nice to go swimming in, especially with the warmer temperatures we've had recently. If we look further down to the south, though, this is pretty much bath water at this point with water temperatures that are being noted in the mid 80s. So a forecast for today, mid 80s for our air temperature, partly cloudy and the wind overall looking nice and calm. By tonight, lower 60s, mostly clear areas of dense fog and the wind overall looking nice and calm. For tomorrow, mostly cloudy with a few thunderstorms on the way late with highs, with highs in the upper 70s and that east wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. All righty, here's a look at your extended forecast brought to you by Spalding's Bangor Radiator and Rush Check. Chances for showers and storms again on Saturday with a dry Sunday and a Monday and temperatures over Overall in the 70s and 80s. A texting driver hit me and the insurance company only offered me this tiny check. Don't take a tiny check from the insurance company. Flowering Associates got me over $350,000. Call the twos. We win for you. What can your John Deere compact tractor do? 
attachments for any job. Financing that's as easy as... Like getting a library card. Affordable. You're going to get this bigger tractor, and it's going to be less money. Dependable. Through the rain, through the snow, I'll work through it all. Comfortable. And I haven't any idea how we survive without it. Experience United and build a tractor package customized for you. We were on the Christmas storm. We had just fixed two broken lines. We heard screaming coming from across the road. I was so scared that I was going to lose him. He's the apple of my eye. Nancy said that Kai was choking, and so I gave him a good hard hit in between his shoulder blades and saw something come out of his mouth, so I knew that was a good sign. If Dana wasn't here, I don't know what I'd done. He just showed up out of the blue, saved his life. Established in 1925, Bangor Floral has been a premier provider of beautiful floral arrangements and thoughtful gifts for almost 100 years. Whatever the occasion, our premium collection of colorful blooms, blossoming plants, and gift baskets have warmed hearts for generations. We strongly support the Buy Local movement, purchasing directly from local farms and growers, and we are committed to the preservation of our environment. Bangor Floral, located at 332 Harlow Street. Stop in today to experience a flower shop like no other. Every night is pizza night at Dragonfire Pizza from wings, salads, and sides to our specialty wood-fired pizzas. You'll find everything you need to satisfy any craving by the slice or by the pie. A little slice of heaven is waiting for you at Dragonfire Pizza, Mill Mall, Ellsworth. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. There's new information about the man accused of killing several sex workers along a Long Island beach. The investigation is now growing to other parts of the country. Fox's Nate Foy is in New York with the latest. Investigations surrounding suspected Long Island serial killer Rex Hewerman are expanding as authorities use DNA evidence to possibly solve other cold cases. So I feel like everyone's just kind of like on edge right now. Yeah. I don't know. I want more information. In Chester County, South Carolina, authorities seized Hewerman's Chevy Avalanche pickup truck from his property. Uh, the Avalanche in South Carolina was the Avalanche that the defendant owned uh, at or around the time of the commission of the three murders. A witness identified the truck, which led task force members to identify Hewerman as a suspect early last year. The 59-year-old also owns property in Las Vegas, where the police department tells Fox News, quote, we are aware of Rex Hewerman's connection to Las Vegas. We are currently reviewing our unsolved cases to see if he has any involvement. Investigators collected evidence at Hewerman's home for a sixth consecutive day and at a nearby storage unit, a 25-minute drive from Gilgo Beach, where authorities found the three women he's charged with murdering. In 2010 and 2011, authorities discovered 11 bodies miles apart on Long Island's South Shore including nine women, an unidentified Asian man, and a toddler. An attorney representing two of those victims' families tells Fox they have renewed hope for justice. The reasonable belief that he could be the killer of the others, uh, but, you know, nobody's sure. Uh, at least we're not, anyway. In Massapequa Park, New York, Nate Foy, Fox News. Israel's president, in a historic address to Congress, said there is an unbreakable bond between Israel and the United States. This, as tensions have escalated recently over proposed plans to change the nation's judicial system. Fox's Trey Yinkst has the latest from Jerusalem. Thank you, dear members of Congress, for your support of Israel throughout history and at this critical moment in time. For the second time in history, the president of the state of Israel addressed the U.S. Congress. Israeli President Isaac Herzog, whose post is largely symbolic, used his remarks to not only mark Israel's celebration of its 75th year, but to address recent tensions over Israeli policies and proposed changes to the country's judicial system. Although we are working through sour issues, just like you, I know our democracy is strong and resilient. Israel has democracy in its DNA. Herzog's remarks, which numerous times received congressional applause, come as demonstrations in Israel have intensified in recent weeks. Tuesday, Congress voted overwhelmingly in support of Israel. 
In the meantime, President Biden, who recently criticized Israel's government, calling it the most extreme in decades, extended an official invite to Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, suggesting the two meet in the U.S. in an effort to ease tensions. When it comes to our relationship with Israel, the U.S. relationship with Israel, it, the core at the core is democratic values. This after a handful of progressive Democrats boycotted Herzog's speech, protesting the country's treatment of Palestinians. I think it's a conversation that we need to have as a country. On Twitter, Netanyahu praised Herzog's address, calling it an important speech for its strong position against Iran. In Jerusalem, Trey Inks, Fox News. Well, you can expect to see some more unusual lights floating across the night sky. SpaceX launched a Falcon 9 rocket into space last night from California. It was carrying 15 satellites for the company's Starlink Internet system. After delivering the satellites, the first stage returned to Earth and landed successfully on a drone ship in the Pacific Ocean. SpaceX says the satellite network is designed to bring low-cost Internet service to rural and rem remote communities. still amazes me that they can launch that and it just lands on that little ship there. Yeah, it's no crazy. At all. It's kind of fitting too. Today's the day of the Apollo 11 um, landing, moon landing. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Right. Yeah. That'll be in the midpoint later. Yeah. So if you want to have kind of information yeah. about that. I love that stuff. Have you ever seen the, the SpaceX satellites up before? No. It's like a, if you look up there, it's like a string of little dots in a one, one line just kind of floats across the sky. Excuse me. Maybe uh, I have them because yeah. that's recognizable. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. neat. And, yeah. And now they're putting more of them up there. Cool. Yeah. Cool stuff. And for a good reason. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Coming up on the second half of the newscast, jewelry made from copper of the old Bangor Public Library dome will be for sale at the SK Tours business. That and more as Good Morning Maine continues. Hi folks, this is Barry Gass of Gass Horse Supply and Western Wear in Orono. We've been in business since 1911, and our third generation family owned business can't wait to show you our unique line of Western Wear and Western Tack. We have Western boots, shirts, hats, belts, and buckles for the entire family. And Western Tack from bridles to saddles and everything in between for your horse. Gass Horse Supply and Western Wear, where the American West comes alive in Maine. One epic night, Godsmack, and Stained, live, July 25th, Main Savings Amphitheater, Bangor, Maine, Godsmack, and Stained, on sale now, buy tickets at waterfrontconcerts.com or ticketmaster.com, Godsmack, and Stained, live. Your favorite restaurants were half off. It's half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. Go to foxbangor.com, click on half off dining, and start saving now. Mossy Ledge Spirits is a true hidden gem in Aetna. Located just three miles off I-95, exit 167, we are home to tastings, tours, cocktails, to-go drinks, bottles, live music, and priceless memories. So enjoy some pizza and raise a glass here at Mossy Ledge Spirits. Great restaurants from all over Eastern Maine at half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. Did you know that it's possible to buy the wrong type of flooring for your home? Whether you're a do-it-yourselfer or a professional contractor, the experts at Don DeCal Mainwood Floors are here to help, offering solid pro advice from choosing the right material and color to installation. Don DeCal features the highest quality hardwood flooring sourced from lumber right here in Maine, from Maine traditions. Not only will you get a floor you'll love, you'll get a floor that will last. Don DeCal Mainwood Floors, buy from the best, forget the rest. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back, everyone. Today is Thursday, July 20th, believe it or not. And today is also National Fortune Cookie Day. In America, we associate fortune cookies with treats we get alongside our check at Chinese restaurants. But some historians say it was a Japanese tradition that went as far back as the mid-19th century. Fortune cookies likely arrived in the United States with the Japanese immigrants who came to Hawaii and California between the 1880s and early 1900s. <laughs> Japanese bakers set up shop in Los Angeles and San Francisco, at first making crackers that had a miso and sesame flavor. I would have loved to try those. Yeah. I love those flavors. It wasn't until about 1911 that the cookies were able to be mass-produced and flavored with the vanilla taste we know them for today. 
I love fortune cookies, but I, I, I never get a good fortune, though. No. Really? No, it's always something kind of silly that, you know. I take a lot of stock in my fortune cookies. Do you? Yes, yeah. I save them. I got a really good one last week. Something about um, it's not the it's the ones who comfort you mm -hmm. are kind of less important than the ones who make you uncomfortable because they push you to yeah. change. And I was like, that's kind of yeah. that's deep, man. deep for a fortune <laughs> cookie. Yeah, yeah. Well, I like that. Yeah, and I like fortune cookies. So yeah, they taste good. Yeah. All right, on this day in history, back in 1858, it was this the first time a fee was charged to go see a baseball game. It cost 50 cents. And which New York beat Brooklyn 22 to 18. Uh, what's that say? Now for a main one. Okay, now for a main one. On this day in 1890, our very own Callus Maine saw snow and had come from the, that head come? I can't read the end there. Saw snow, snow and, and hail. It's cutting off like the last part of the line yes. there. Yeah, snow we gotta fix the hail. prompter. Let me move over here. Yes. Snow and hail come from the sky. This came from the report called Observations of the New England Meteorological Society in the year 1890, saying that the month of July had brought extreme droughts and severe ranges in temperatures the entire month. Crazy. Yeah. Snow and hail and Kylis in July. That's nuts. Yeah, no thank you. Glad it's not happening this month. I know. Yeah. On this day in 1921, Congresswoman Alice M Mary Robertson became the first woman to preside over the floor of the U.S. House of Representatives. And in 1969, the Apollo 11 crew of Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed on the surface of the moon. Aldrin and Armstrong walked on the moon seven hours later with the British Broadcasting Network continuously broadcasting the event for 11 hours straight. The coverage was packed with special guests, scientific experts, interviews, and live music. I can still vaguely remember that time when I was little, little. Right. You know, people gathered around the TV set to watch, watch my, it. My dad always yeah. told me how he was about nine at that mm -hmm. time, and he said it was just like unimaginable. He felt yeah. like it was a dream. And I, my generation has no concept of this. Yeah. I mean, we've grown up with it being normal. Yeah, it was such an exciting time because of the space race. We were yeah. challenged to do that and, yeah. and then they did it. Yeah, it's so cool. I wish I could have been there. Yeah. Okay, for birthdays today, we have actress Sandra O, oh, known for her roles in Grey's Anatomy and Killing Eve. She's 52 today. Next, we have singer-songwriter Chris Cornell, known best for being the lead vocalist for the rock bands Soundgarden and Audio Slave. He passed away in 2017 at the age of 52. And finally, guitarist Carlos Santana is 76 today. He's coming to Bangor this summer. I know. Sometime. I love his stuff, too. I know. So. I'm jealous. Yeah. I think he's been to Bangor before. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. I can't remember. I'd like, to, like to check it out, though. He's awesome, though. So. He's had some um, problematic health lately, too. Has he? Yeah, so yeah. fingers crossed that he's okay. Yeah. Yep. I don't like the sound of that. I know. Okay, um, it's going to be a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. Less humidity and more sun. This, what a win-win. This is the kind of summer day we all look forward to. Yes. When, when you're sitting there in February dreaming of summer, this is the kind of day you want. Yeah, good so. point. Here's Devin Biggs with a forecast. And thank you very much, Craig and Emma. Happy Thursday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Spalding's Bangor Radiator and Rust Check. Don't let rust get the best of your car. Protect it with Spalding's Bangor Radiator and Rust Check. Schedule your service now. All right, let's get into things this morning. A little bit of fog out there in a few spots. At least at this point, not very widespread, so it might be very hit and miss out there. So let's exercise some caution this morning. Low beam lights or fog lights may help you out this morning if you encounter some fog. But otherwise, most of us looking pretty good. Good. Otherwise, as we get things rolling out there this morning, there's a few clouds in a few spots, even a few showers along the coast this morning. These will, we will not have to worry about all that much as we will be under a dry sky today. A partly cloudy sky today, so no rain to get too worried about. As we do zoom things out, this is all moving from the west, going toward the east with a system that's moving away now. So a dry day expected, but we do have chances for showers and storms on the way Friday and also into Saturday. So moving forward, though, not too bad. Partly cloudy, I do not buy the precipitation here. We're dry today with a partly cloudy sky. We're mostly clear later on tonight with areas of dense fog that will develop. On top of that, we're also watching just a tiny bit of wind, which will be rather calm, if not five miles per hour at best. So the wind will continue to behave itself as we do move forward in time. So for today, partly cloudy with highs in the mid-80s and the wind overall looking nice and calm. For tonight, mostly clear areas of dense fog on the way, lows in the low 60s and the wind overall looking nice and calm. Hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period, a lot of sunshine and a few passing clouds temperatures in the 80s your full five-day forecast is coming up craig and emma
Love to see it. Not crazy nice. hot either. No, it's, yeah, it's perfect. Right. Yeah. Okay, well, a local jewelry company has been creating handcrafted pieces for several years by using over 100 year old copper that is sourced directly from the former iconic dome of the Bangor Public Library. Now, a new collaboration is helping them con continue to combine local history with art, and our Grace Blanchard got an up close look. Oh, no, I sort of, sort of developed a reputation in Maine as the copper lady. Roxanne J. Munsgard is one of the owners of Maine Jewelry and Art, who have taken copper from the old Bangor Library Dome to create unique and handcrafted jewelry for several years. People really enjoy historical, like having a part of history. Uh, some people do, and I'm one of those, and I need to know history to know where we've come from. And... Um, so for me, this is just a very valuable project. Back in 2014, they started a fundraiser project for the Bangor Public Library Renovation Fund and have since donated around $36,000 to the library from selling their jewelry. However, their project was interrupted when they had to close down their shop in Bangor in 2022. Um, Ann and I love making jewelry. Uh, keeping our store open was uh, uh, too much work for us. The, the main jewelry and art shop has had the copper from the library for years and years and years, and they've got, they make amazing jewelry. When we heard that they were closing, my wife Jennifer said, we got to go over and we got to take a, take a look at this stuff. The jewelry can now be found at SK Tours in Bangor, which is known for offering tours highlighting Stephen King's work. And the owners say this collaboration has been very popular with their customers. We get to talk a bit about the contributions of the Stephen and Tabitha King Foundation, and a lot of it is that library. And our fans are primarily readers. So when we talk about the, some of their contributions to the city and we talk about the library, for them to be able to take a piece of that home with them is, is pretty awesome. The jewelry can also be purchased online. However, the owners are very happy to be selling their work on store shelves in town again. So being able to continue to make jewelry as a, quote, retired woman is really special, especially knowing that it's so well loved. In Bangor, Grace Blanchard, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Boy, they really are beautiful, too, and you can have a little piece of Bangor's history. All sorts of different jewelry, yeah. yeah. We had the owner of SK Tours on about a year mm -hmm. ago. It seems like maybe it's time to get them back on. Yeah, yeah. some things to talk about. Yeah, they're busy. I see their vans yep. everywhere. I'm glad to see it. Yeah, good. Yep. All right, still to come here this morning, Ryan Sudol will have the latest with sports. Don't go away. General Rental Center has been serving Central Maine for more than 30 years with an extensive inventory, including mini track loaders with attachments, full-size track skid steer, track loader and backhoe, wheel loader with attachments, a 50-foot towable aerial lift, and a 45-foot self-propelled four-wheel drive lift. If you can't find it on our website, we can find it for you. Call for multi-day and weekend special rates. When the acres add up, so does the work. The Kubota L02 series is ready for it. Part of the number one rated tractor brand for durability and owner experience, it features powerful, dependable Kubota diesel engines, performance match detachments, and the versatility to get the job done right. Available at Doors Equipment, 1468 Outer Hammond Street, Bangor. Should I be selling right now? I gotta get a bigger place. What's my house worth? What do you think? Ooh. What's my house really worth? <laughs> oh, this is pretty. How do I buy a house? What if I don't have time to see it in person? What is going on with this housing market? You have questions. We can take the guesswork out of that. Contact a Remax collaborative agent today. We service all of Maine. Hello, Eastern Maine. Watch You Bet Your Life weekdays at 10 a.m. here on ABC7. Hey everybody, Ryan Sudol here. Thank you so much for joining us. Over in VZ and Ellsworth this week, a former NBA champion was working with the next generation of Maine Hoopers. Our Tyler Cruz caught up with the White Mamba, Brian Scalabrini, about his camps. 
So this is my, my version of paying it forward. Over the past few days, kids from all over the area got to learn from an NBA champion. You know, am I going to be able to touch 100 kids today and, and make them all into NBA players? No. But I can help them with messages in their life and, and what it takes. Brian Scalabrini, or the White Mamba, who won a title with the Celtics back in 2008, held camps with Results Basketball in Ellsworth and VZ this past week. His way of giving back. I was a little kid at one time. I had great coaches. Because of those great coaches, I'm in the position right now where I'm very fortunate. But the 11 years in the NBA, the, the voice of the Celtics, all those things happen not because I'm just a really good guy. Like, I've had great coaches that taught me and helped me learn. Scal wasn't just in town for the younger kids, though. But also there's that Cooper flag, you know, element to it. And not just him. There's other kids on Main United that I'm trying to help out. And even with two former Division I basketball players on the bench, there's still a lot the Main United guys are taking from Scal. He's, he's such a good coach. I mean, he knows what he's talking about. He, and it's awesome because our coaching staff is really good, but it's also good to hear from other guys, especially Scal. Yeah, it's definitely different to have Scal in here. You know, he's an intense guy. He knows a lot about the game. And so just to have him kind of, you know, shed some knowledge on us, you know, it's definitely has been a cool week. The uh, professional point of view and just having been around it for so long and seeing what it takes, and he really just knows um, what it takes to be a, be a pro and become a pro. But whether you're a future pro or just someone looking to get a little bit better, the message from the Mamba remains the same. If you work, your results will be there. The same work that I had to put in, you have to put in, and the, and the, the boss at the company and the whatever, right? Everyone has to work. It's the same message going forward. Work hard, love what you do, have fun, be passionate. You do that over and over again, you'll get really good. From VZ, I'm Tyler Cruz, ABC7, Fox 22 Sports. Thank you very much, Tyler. Okay, now let's hit the links. Final round of the Maine Women's Amateur Championship was Wednesday. Aaron Holmes out of Valhalla beginning the day with an eight-shot lead. Back to Brunswick Golf Club we go. Two-time defending champ Ruby Haylock draining a short par putt on 11 here to stay in the hunt. Staying on 11, check out this approach from Shivani Schmulen, putting it just inches away from the cup where she would tap in for birdie. Then on 13, Shivani again, long birdie putt, She'll drain it, making a run on the back nine. On 13 again, Aaron Holmes, your leader. A tough putt to save par. Huge shot for Aaron then. On 17, this is Jade Haylock. Birdied 15, and now another birdie on the way. This one from way downtown, but the day belonging to Aaron Holmes. Check out her approach on 18. Great shot to get to the green in regulation. She would end up tapping in for par for the win and her first ever Maine Amateur Women's title. Okay, now let's look at that leaderboard. Of course, Aaron Holmes finishing first with a score of minus one. Shivani Schmulen, second place, plus four. Jade and Ruby Haylock, third and fourth at six and seven over par. And Kristen Kanegeiser in fifth place at 15 over par. It was definitely a grind. I um, was a lot less accurate off the tee, so I had to play a lot of things safer. Um, wasn't making as many putts, so it definitely, you know, going into the last three holes, knowing I had a six-stroke lead or whatever it was, was really good for my mental game. <laughs> Feels amazing. It's been on my golf bucket list forever, so to finally get it done is just the best feeling. Okay, now to the Red Sox. Sox looking for their second straight series win to start the second half of the season against Oakland Wednesday afternoon. Top first, they start out hot. Justin Turner with a man on, sends this one deep into left center, and it is gone. 15th of the year for him, it's 2-0 Sox. Bottom first, Brian Bayo on the mound. A's Jay Blade with a man on. He hits a moonshot to deep right field. That one is a home run just like that. We are tied. Bottom second. Cody Thomas, a man on, drills a line drive to right center, off the scoreboard for two A's, another home run allowed by Bayo. Then bottom four, still in, still giving up two run bombs. It's Jace Peterson's turn for a homer. Tough go for Bayo in this one. That fan drops his beer, and the Sox drop this one, six to five. Hey, but despite that, the Red Sox are one of the hottest teams in all of baseball heading into Wednesday. They were first in win percentage, and batting average, and plus third in ERA in July. And down in Portland, Trevor Story is making a rehab start Thursday. Another great sign. Speaking of which, Sox head of baseball ops Chaim Bloom was at the Sea Dogs Wednesday night game against Hartford. And he says that the Sox run lately simply comes down to the team's best starting to play like it. 
that has happened, I think in large part because of the progress of our core players. Whether that's our young players on the position player side, the pitching side, some of the veteran acquisitions that we've made, you know, you're starting to see that core really come together. And that's, that's the way we want to win because it's something that you can sustain and build on. All right, well, that's all the time we have for sports. I'm Ryan Sudall. We'll be back right after the break. Make your waterfront even more fun and more functional than it already is with a Shoremaster premium dock system from Hammond Lumber Company. Hammond is the country's largest stocking Shoremaster dealer with standing docks, rolling docks, floating docks, and boat lifts for any watercraft. Shoremaster's nearly limitless customization options make it easy to create the perfect dock system for your needs. Take your shoreline to the next level with Shoremaster from Hammond Lumber Company. Here we are at Rennie's and Wells on Route 1. Let's go see some people. Come on. We need some swimsuit and some fun stuff for the kids to do and enjoy the beach. What game did you get? Candyland. Candyland. That's a good one. Oh, that is a good one. That's a fun game. Awesome store, down to earth. You know, I love it. It's just a fantastic. It's an adventure coming here all the time. You know, it's Perfect. like a treasure hunt, Rennie's you know? Adventure. No, I, I know. I know. That's a slogan, but I mean, that's, that's, that's what it's yeah. about, you know? Yeah. Rennie's the main, main adventure. adventure. <laughs> For over 25 years, Maine Collision Center has been your main source for collision repair. Take a look at the following and you'll see why Maine Collision Center brings their team of collision repair specialists to guarantee the right person for the right repair job every time. The result, vehicles restored to their beauty and dependability without the weights and hassles. Owner Sean Sullivan invites you to see his spacious new facility on Target Industrial Circle and see why Maine Collision Center should be your choice for collision repair. With drug overdose deaths still alarmingly high across the country, researchers are trying to develop new treatments to help prevent more people from dying. Fox News correspondent Kevin Cork takes a look at how CBD compounds could offer hope and why scientists are experimenting with cannabis-related material in the fight against synthetic opioids. We are facing a public health crisis. Drug overdoses continue straining families and healthcare systems nationwide. The CDC says synthetic opioids like fentanyl are one of the main factors behind the recent increases in drug overdose deaths. Right now, fentanyl is the leading cause of death among 18 through 42 year olds in our country. The leading cause of death. According to the National Institutes of Health, when someone takes fentanyl, the drug binds to the person's opioid receptors in their brain. And while the opioid overdose reversal drug, naloxone, is being used to save lives, some scientists say fentanyl is just too strong, and more than one dose of naloxone may be needed to reverse its effects. Naloxone, it's a competitive antagonist. It, it competes with uh, the, the fentanyl drugs for binding at the same site on these opiate receptors. But researchers from Indiana University have been experimenting with dozens of different compounds in order to find alternative overdose treatments that might better respond to synthetic opioids. So far, the team found altered forms of CBD compounds from cannabis plants seem to show promising results in reducing just how much fentanyl binds to opioid receptors. The team hopes to build on their findings and begin testing their compound's effects on animals to ensure it's safe for human trials in the future. I'm Kevin Cork, Fox News. Boy, that's certainly promising news. It's such a big problem, not only in Maine, but all across the country at this point. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. if CBD can be sold in gas stations, mm -hmm. maybe it should be explored more to see if what it can be done to be helpful with. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, coming up next, we'll have, or you're letting the prompter yeah, go. Know, Sorry. Going by. <laughs> we'll we're going by. Now we're going to the forecast, yes. I believe, right? Yes. Here's Devin Thinks. <laughs> My bad. 
Alrighty, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Spalding's Bangor Radiator and Rust Check. Don't let rust get the best of your car. Protect it with Spalding's Bangor Radiator and Rust Check. Schedule your service now. All right, let's get into things. Fog isn't a huge deal out there, at least for the time being. So maybe a little bit of a few spots that are seeing some of that. But we're looking fine as we do move forward in time. Just watch out for maybe some patchy areas where your low beam lights or fog lights might be necessary. Otherwise, a few clouds tracking through this morning, even a few showers along the coast that we're noticing as well. That will all get out of here. We're going to be under a party con sky today so finally a nice day to get outside and enjoy the nice weather the system is moving away from us now high pressure located right overhead we're just going to be under a party cloudy sky today with no precipitation to worry about for today only so party cloudy today i do not buy any rain chances this thing is showing we're dry all day long will then become mostly clear later on tonight areas of dense fog developing yet again as we head towards tomorrow morning we may have to watch that closely then some clouds moving in again as we head towards friday evening and a parts of saturday morning too with a few showers and storms possible late Friday as well, continuing in a parts of early Saturday morning. Now I'll continue as we do move forward. Otherwise, though, your muggy meter showing dew points that are finally falling for a change, though. We're back in the 50s and 60s for today and part of tomorrow. And once we head towards later to tomorrow and Saturday, Sunday, and beyond, we're looking for dew points in the middle 60s again. But Monday and Tuesday falling back down between the 50s and also into the 60s. If you're heading outside today, that UV index will be at an 8. It's considered very high. A burn time at 15 minutes. Had sunglasses the sunscreen shade will be necessary to avoid a bad sunburn. Our average high temperature is 81 degrees. Mid 80s is what we'll do today. We'll then fall back into the upper 70s Friday into Saturday. Mid 80s return against Sunday and lasting through at least Wednesday as we head towards the next week. Otherwise, the water temperatures in the ocean are warming up into the upper 60s to lower 70s. So the ocean feeling pretty nice to go swimming in, especially with the warmer temperatures we've had recently. If we look further down to the south, though, this is pretty much bath water at this point with water temperatures that are being noted in the mid 80s. So a forecast for today, mid 80s for our air temperature, partly cloudy and the wind overall looking nice and calm. By tonight, lower 60s, mostly clear areas of dense fog and the wind overall looking nice and calm. For tomorrow, mostly cloudy with a few thunderstorms on the way late with highs, with highs in the upper 70s and that east wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Alrighty, here's a look at your extended forecast brought to you by Spalding's Bangor Radiator and Rush Check. Chances for showers and storms again on Saturday, within dry Sunday and Monday and temperatures over overall in the 70s and 80s.